Algebra 2, 8.4a, we're moving on to the discriminant of the quadratic formula, and I have a theorem for you. All right, so like always, the previous videos are in this video's description, so you can just click on them. So if you become lost or confused during this video, watch the previous ones to catch up, okay? So we did this in the last one, in the last video. We did the quadratic formula. And this part right here under the radical sign, that's called the discriminant. And it's the discriminant of the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, this whole thing here, can be used when the coefficients are any complex numbers. You know, they involve i. The discriminant will help us determine the nature of the solutions of the quadratic equation. It'll help us determine whether there's a real solution or not. It helps us discriminate between the possible types of solutions to the quadratic equation. We'll be able to know, is there one solution, two solutions? Are they real numbers? Are they non-real numbers? And are they com complex conjugates of each other? All from the discriminant. Isn't that cool? Isn't he helpful? So here's our theorem. An equation, and this is quadratic equation in standard form, isn't it? ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, as long as a isn't a zero, and all coefficients, real numbers, has first of all, exactly one real number solution if that discriminant equals zero, two real number solutions if the discriminant is larger than zero, and two complex non-real solutions if it's less than zero. So you know this one means if it's a positive and that one's if it's a negative, because if it's less than zero, it's negative, right? And we can determine the nature of the solutions of this quadratic equation in standard form we have a 9 here for A, we have a negative 12 here for B, and a 4 for C. And we're going to substitute those into this discriminant. So here's our discriminant, B squared minus 4AC. All right, that's what's under the radical sign, okay? And you notice we don't have the radical sign around it. We just have the B squared minus 4AC. All right, so for B, we had a negative 12, so that's going to go here and it's going to be squared. Then we have minus 4, and then we have to multiply A and C and a is a 9, and c is a 4. So that's going to give us a negative 12 times negative 12 is a positive 144. 9 times 4 is 36. Negative 4 times 36 gives us a negative 144. So that means it equals 0. Our discriminant equals 0. So there's exactly one real number solution. So if you look at the theorem, it equals 0. So there's one real number solution. See that? All right, let's try another one. We can determine the nature of the solutions of this one, and you can see it's in standard form. We have got a 1 now, an invisible 1 here for A, don't we? And B is a 5, and C is an 8. We compute the discriminant. We have B squared minus 4AC, so we have 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 8. It's going to give us a 25 minus 4 times 8, which is a 32. 25 minus 32 is a negative 7. So the discriminant is negative. It's less than 0. So there's two non-real solutions that are complex conjugates of each other. See? It's less than 0. So there's two complex non-real solutions. Okay? Let's try another one. We can determine the solutions of this one, this quadratic equation in standard form. We've got an invisible 1 again for our A. B is a 5 and C is a 6. We compute the discriminant, that B squared minus 4AC. We get 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 6. And 1 times 6 is 6, so we have a negative 4 times 6, which gives us a negative 24. So we have 25 minus 24, and it gives us a positive 1. The discriminant is larger than 0. It's positive, so there's two real solutions. If it's larger than zero, we have two real number solutions, okay? So, this is it in a nutshell. If the discriminant is equal to zero, there's one real number solution. You gotta write this in your notes, right? If it's negative, there's two non-real solutions that are complex conjugates of each other. And if it's positive, there's two real solutions, all right? This is gonna be very helpful for you to write down in your notes somewhere, all right? in the section for quadratic equations and the quadratic formula, all right? So, 
Sometimes it's better to use the quadratic formula, like when the numbers are huge and have many po multiplication possibilities. And we can use the quadratic formula even when we can factor, but we don't see how to factor. Eh, just use the quadratic formula. But factoring a quadratic equation is almost always faster and more accurate than using the quadratic formula. So we want to factor whenever we can, but it's nice to have him to fall back on, isn't it? All right, our next video is going to be 8.4b. We're going to talk about the sums and products of quadratic equation solutions. I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist. And back last year in Algebra 1, if that's where you're at and you're just following along here with Algebra 2, which is fine, Chapter 13 had 13.4a, which talked about the quadratic formula, and 13.4b talked about the discriminant, and then 13.5 and 13.6 talked about using them and the quadratic equations to solve, okay? And all the previous videos for Chapter 8 that we've done so far, I believe there's like six of them, I'm not sure, but they're going to be linked into this description also, all right? So you'll just be able to click on them and do any studying or reviewing that you need to do if you have a chapter test coming up and maybe even a semi-final or a final, right? So I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're following along with each video because that's going to make your life easy. And don't forget, you can support me through the YouTube fan funding. If you go to my homepage, you'll see a fan funding button. And you can also become a monthly patron on patreon.com and pledge a dollar a month or a couple dollars a month to help me out. All right? I'll see you next video. Bye.